and welcome back to the Cracking Pain YouTube channel. Today we're going to be doing a question for some of the beginners to leak code that might be subscribed to the channel and we're going to be doing a relatively easy one. So we're going to be solving 262 strobogrammatic number. So let's read the question prompt. Given a string num, which represents an integer, return true if the number is a strobogrammatic number and a strobogrammatic number is a number that looks the same when rotated 180 degrees, aka looked at upside down. So we can see that uh, in the example here, we're given 88. Obviously, whoops, you can't see that. It's a bad pen color. Uh, obviously, if you're given the number 88, you could flip it and it would still be 88, right? Um, we could do the same thing with 96, right? This would become 69 and it would look the same uh, when you rotate it, right? So what we want to do here, uh, and we can see that this example, you know, 692. So if we were to turn this around, um, you know, it wouldn't work because two and nine are not, uh, you know, flippable, right? So what this question boils down to is just, um, you know, whether, you know, a pair of numbers uh, are basically flippable and it has to be the same way for basically all the pairs, right? So let's think about what numbers are flippable and look the same when rotated 180 degrees, right? So zero will obviously be flippable and that's fine. So one will also be flippable and it's fine. So eight is also the same. If we flip eight upside down, it's still the same. So a six will only be the same if we flip a nine upside down. So the reason that nine six is the same as six nine is because we can flip them either way and we'll get the same number. So in order for a six to be matched up correctly, it needs to be matched up with a nine because when a nine is flipped, it becomes a six and the other way around. And that's the last one we have here. So we'll say that nine flips to six. So essentially what we want to do is we want to have a pointer. So let's say we have nine, six, two, and we're going to have a pointer at the left side and we're going to have a pointer at the right side. And we're going to compare, are these numbers strobogrammatic, which means that is the number, um, you know, when flipped for nine, is that the same as the number when flipped for two? So obviously two is not a strobogrammatic number. So we can stop here. Um, but, you know, if we had, you know, 88, then we'd have our pointer here at the left and our pointer here at the right. And essentially what we would do is we would check is the, the, the flip number for eight the same as, you know, the flip number for eight, which it is. Uh, so we can return true here. And essentially what we want to do is we just want to continue. So, uh, you know, if we just had nine, six um, and then nine, six here, would this work? So you know, let's think about it. So we have our pointers here, the nine and the six. So obviously nine when flipped becomes six. So that's fine. Um, both of them match to the same value. So this is okay. And then same with this six and nine, because we'll move our left pointer up one and we'll move our right pointer down one. Uh, and then we're going to keep checking until either we have a case where it breaks or we actually cross uh, the paths of our two pointers here. Uh, you know, and that will happen in the middle of our string. Once we get to that middle point, we can stop checking because we will already have checked um, both sides. So that's essentially what we want to do. If it's a little bit confusing for you, don't worry. When we actually go to the code editor, we'll type this up. It's going to be really simple and let's see uh, how we do it. So I'll see you in the code editor. Back in the code editor, let's type this up. So we're going to need some way to actually keep track of which numbers uh, map to other numbers which can be flipped. So the best way for us to do this is actually to define a dictionary here. So we'll say strobo numbers um, and we're going to create a new dictionary and we need to initialize our values. So obviously zero will map to zero because you can flip the zero and it's the same. Uh, one will flip to one and uh, eights will flip to eights. Whoops. Eight will flip to eight. That's fine. And remember, in order for a six to be flipped, the other side needs to be a nine. So that way it can flip and become the same value. So and the same thing is going to be true for a nine. If we flip it, we need to have a six uh, in that position to actually get it to be fine. So that is our Strobo numbers uh, map. Now what we want to do is actually figure out uh, whether the number is Strobo grammatic. 
And the first thing that we want to do is actually uh, handle a bit of an edge case. And that is when the number is actually of length one. Because remember, we're using a two pointer approach. One pointer will actually be at the beginning of the array and one will be at the end of the array. And if there's actually only one uh, value in our number, then we can just check it directly. So we're going to say if the length of num actually equals to one, what we want to do is we actually just want to check whether or not one of our numbers is a zero, one or eight because these numbers can basically stand on uh, by themselves and be flipped uh, and be fine, right? A six needs a nine to be flipped in order to get a six. Same with a nine needs a six to be flipped. So if it was just one number, obviously it's not gonna be the same. So we want to basically check uh, that it's a zero, one or eight. So we're going to return whether our number is actually in, let's see, uh, zero, one, or eight. So if it's one of those string values, then we, uh, we will return true here. If not, we'll return false. Otherwise, we just want to process it as normal. So we're going to set our pointer one i at the beginning of the array. So index zero, and we're going to set j to the end of the array. So length of num minus one. And now we're simply going to iterate, um, moving the i pointer up and the j pointer down at each iteration until they actually meet in the middle. So we're going to say while i is less than j we actually want to say if num of i if the num of i is a strobel grenadic number then we have a chance for this to be flipped right if it's not a strobel grammatic number then there's nothing we can do here so we actually just want to exit so if the number at i is in strobo numbers so it needs to be in our uh you know values of zero one eight six or nine if it's there and we want to check that strobo numbers of i actually equals to oops sorry num of i num of i here oops num of i actually equals to num of j then we know that we have a strobo grammatic uh, pair right so if we have you know some number six and then nine here if we were to basically take six uh, we want to make sure that if we flip six, we're going to get whatever the value is down here. So we want to make sure that flipping six will actually give us whatever the value at uh, J is. That way, when we flip it, uh, the values will match. So we want to see that basically is the value here uh, at the end J, is it going to be nine? So we want to make sure that the value that we take um, for that value. So the six maps to nine, which is equal to the nine here. So that's how we're going to do the check. So if this case is true, uh, you know, we simply want to increment our uh, indices and keep going. And remember, we're going to keep going until either uh, this condition is not met, in which case we can return false or our while loop breaks. So otherwise, if uh, the either of these conditions is not met, then what we want to do is simply return false here. So if we make it through our entire while loop without uh, returning false, then we know that our number is a strobo grammatic number and we can simply return true. So I just want to make sure I haven't made any bugs here. Let me just run this real quick and OK, we're good to go. Let me just submit this and what happened? I think it's a, yeah, OK, accepted. So that's fine. Let's close this and let's think about what the um, time and space complexity here is. So. The time complexity here is going to be big O of n. Uh, in the worst case, we need to parse the entire string here to basically figure out that it's a strobo grammatic number. So because of that, the time complexity is going to be big O of n. For the space complexity, it's actually going to be big O of 1 because even though we have this map here, um, this map is actually a, um, we know how many keys are in it, right? There's a maximum of five keys. And because there's five keys and we know that ahead of time, it's not dependent on how large num is. It's just going to be uh, big O of five. But remember that this is the same thing as five times big O of one. And we don't care about constants uh, when talking about asymptotic runtime complexity. So it's just a big O of one uh, space here. So. That is how you solve um, strobo grammatic number. Again, this is a relatively easy question. I think it's kind of just testing your ability to use hash maps, and then it kind of throws in uh, the extra logical checks of actually checking whether or not a uh, number is strobo grammatic. So 
not too crazy. Uh, hopefully this video uh, helped you guys with this problem. If it did, please consider leaving a like and a comment. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. And uh, thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day.